Number one, it's going to help us identify, holy schnikers, I don't think I understood that as well as I should have. One of my first experiences at a formal institution that was focusing on IT training and computers was in Southern California in the 1980s, and that was at Control Data Institute, or CDI for short. I have a lot of fond memories about that experience, and I also learned some really valuable lessons in that process, and I'd like to share them with you in this video. Now, one of the benefits of starting something new is that normally there's a huge amount of enthusiasm for it. And that's really important with anything new because at the beginning of whatever it is that we're learning, whether it's uh, information technology or anything else that requires learning and skills, at the beginning, there's quite a, there's quite a ramp up. There's a, a learning curve that's pretty steep sometimes. And one of the secrets that got me through the first month was the raw enthusiasm because they don't just like put you in a computer lab and say, start working. There, it's a lot of book work. In fact, in those days, uh, they still had eight inch floppy disks. You can Google that. Um, that was, And then after that, they got to five and a quarter inch floppies and then three and a half inch floppies. And now we don't use floppies anymore at all. But some of the equipment that I used to study was books and eight inch floppies and a computer with green text on the screen and a lot of study. Things like, oh, some things that I've never used in production. Um, things like Eli the Iceman. It's like, what is Eli the Iceman? That's a way to, uh, in an AC circuit, to remember the relationship between voltage and current uh, in an AC circuit and the phases involved. Uh, so as I started learning all that stuff, I didn't know what was gonna be super important or what was not gonna be important. And so the enthusiasm gave me the opportunity, and that's why I invite you to do too, with anything that we wanna tackle, use the enthusiasm to just go ahead and learn it. Don't just learn it to memorize it, uh, you know, so I can repeat that, when we're learning something, take the time to learn it, to know it. Now, sometimes what I do, even today, is I want to learn something and I'll just, <laughs> I'll jump at it. And I'll maybe play a video at 1.5 speed or 2x or I'll speed read a book or speed read something because I want to get through it. But what I have found is this. If it's truly important and I want to learn it, if I speed attack it or go through it really fast and I kind of like get pieces of it, Usually it takes me two or three times longer than if I just slowed down a little bit. And the moment we have is now. So if we want to spend our time right now learning a new topic, let's imagine that you're studying networking. That's one of my, my, pa my passions. And you're learning about ARP, Address Resolution Protocol. Take some time and enjoy it. It's like, okay, why, why is ARP here? Why is it needed? What's a layer two MAC address? How did peers need it? If this device on this network is communicating with a remote device on a different network, which layer two address does he need? Does default gateway? Yes, that's the answer. Um, but understanding how it works and slowing down just a little bit to make sure we learn what we're focusing on at the moment, that's a really good technique. So anytime we have to rush, it may not be the best use of our time. Now, slow and steady does indeed win the race when we're learning new things and applying our skills and making sure we have it. So my tip that I would pull from that whole experience that I'd like to share with you is that we'd want to have something to study and have something to do that would measure how we're doing. If we're supposed to be studying 30, 30 minutes a day, let's measure that somehow. Whatever works for you. It could be a paper calendar. It could be electronic. And look at the history. And then once a week, take a look and say, okay, am I studying? Yes or no? Or if we're studying a technology like networking or, or database administration or, or whatever it might be, cell phone service or cell phone, radio frequency, Wi-Fi. If we're supposed to be learning something, maybe write an objective. My objective when learning this or studying this is to be able to do this and write it out. I want to be able to describe what this is, why it works, the way it does, and how to troubleshoot it. If that's your goal, then you'd want to measure against that. So the key would be to allocate time now, I'm a parent of many children, and there is the importance of quality time with kids, but there's also a huge importance for quantity of time. So the same thing for studying and learning new skills. It's a matter of scheduling the time and then using that time as effectively as possible. It, it does take the time. So schedule the time, measure your success by your studies, by meeting your objectives, and then when you've met those, you cross it off your list and move forward. You might say, Keith, okay. How do we, you know, tell whether or not we've really understood a concept that we're studying? Explain it to a loved one. That's a great way to do it. If you, if a person can simply explain a concept to another human, that's going to do one of two things. Number one, it's going to help us identify, holy schnikers, 
I don't think I understood that as well as I should have. Or two, we're going to explain it and we're going to say, oh yeah, I got it. I can explain that concisely with not too many words in an accurate fashion. And I think I'm getting better and better at that topic as a result. So my hope for you is that you'll identify those things that you want to improve on or get better on, whether it's studying something or doing something or exercising or eating better or whatever it is, schedule time, do the thing, and then measure it. Come back and take a look and see how you're doing in your goals. And when you need to correct a little bit, make the correction and then keep on going. And getting back to my, my experience at Control Data Institute back in the 80s, although I did learn a lot of things that I didn't need, I didn't need all that information, the information I did get and the skills that I did gain got me an entry-level job with EDS, Electronic Data Systems. That's a company that Ross Perot back in the 90s founded. And that was the launch of my IT career, both as a technician and an engineer and a trainer in the world of IT. And it happened because a year before, like eight months before, I started the school, I applied myself, I learned those things they asked me to learn, and that just led one thing to the next, to the next, to the next and that same kind of logic and progression can happen for everyone if we just take whatever our situation is apply ourselves and then look for the next step and the next step and my friend the next freaking step so thanks for joining me in this story about control data institute my first formal training and i'll see you my friend in the next video where i'll talk with you about my first job at electronic data systems it's a blast too so if you haven't already please subscribe Make sure you get alerts for all these new videos that are coming in and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.